Well, it has been done before. We have seen soft landings in the past from the United States, uh, the Soviet Union, China, and, and India. But it is something that is still difficult to do. We saw the um, US company Astrobotics uh, lunar lander fail just yesterday. It was reorbited and, and burned up in the Earth atmosphere. Japan itself has also had a failed uh, lunar mission that came from a private Japanese company, Israel also had a private company that tried to soft land in the past and failed. So it's still difficult to do. And so it's still an achievement, but one that has been done before. In terms of what uh, space experts are expecting from this, we've heard a lot about the accuracy uh, of uh, this smart lander. What other kind of, of data are experts hoping uh, to gather at this time? Well, unfortunately, it's looking like this might be a short-lived mission, but there's certainly a renewed interest in the moon right now. I think a lot of that comes from the fact that we're quite sure that there's water on the surface, which is something we weren't entirely sure about before. So that opens up the possibility of a lot of different types of exploration now, using that water for to create rocket fuel for further missions or even to sustain human life on the planet. So there is a lot of activity right now that's focused around that potential human occupation of the lunar surface in the future. And then we also see more commercial activity there with discussions about using lunar resources in situ on the moon. And supposedly these water resources, if they're discovered, uh, could be kind of a building base as a possible stopover on the way uh, to Mars, which sounds, uh, you know, very strange to say. But I guess that, you know, scientists are looking at that uh, possibility for the future. Absolutely. Actually, the idea of using the moon as a base for further uh, travel into the cosmos has been around for, for decades, but we're only now getting to the point where the technology is potentially there. The thing is, water is very heavy, so it's hard to get off of the Earth's surface uh, and very expensive for that reason as well. So if it were to be that we could... Uh, uh, gather water from the lunar surface, it would open up a whole lot of possibilities, including potentially missions to Mars. I mean, we've heard uh, in that report, and, and you've touched on it, this idea that the craft solar cells are not quite working, and so that, you know, time ultimately is running out with uh, the battery. That must be uh, disappointing uh, for, for scientists in this. I would imagine it's quite tense at JAXA at the moment while they wait to see just how long they can get the mission to work. Having said that, a big part of this, as has been said, is this idea of having a really precise uh, landing and, and reducing the area that these um, objects can be targeted at, hence the name the Sniper mission. So I think that there's still going to be successes for it. It was only going to be a short mission anyway, lasting about two weeks. And so, yes, it's a disappointment, but I think there will be plenty of information to be gathered from it. I mean, you spoke about some of the, uh, you know, disappointments that Japan has had, you know, in the run up uh, to this. Does this kind of restore their, their reputation uh, in space off the back of those uh, failures? Certainly. Having said that, I would reiterate that Japan has always had a very prestigious space program. They have a lot of other successful missions that are out in other parts of the universe right now. Um, but this will be a, a feather in their cap and uh, make sure that they continue to be seen as an important player in the space capable uh, uh, countries that are out there. And just a final question for you, Jill. You're somebody who's involved in, in research, one would imagine. Will the kind of data that comes out of a mission like this uh, allow you kind of more targeted research questions? Most certainly. So a lot of what we do, and one of the things that's nice about space activities, there's often a lot of sharing of information between different partners, um, different countries, as well as private companies that are now involved in lunar activity and exploration. And so this will all be feeding into the ability to refine these missions. I mean, space, we, we see the big headline missions when they're successful or if they fail, but really it's about building over time the information that we have, gathering that data and refining our activities and our our research questions.